Hello, Internet. How's it going? This is Sam Messman from We Make Movies here, and the idea behind these tutorials is to give you a sense of what our friends of Apple have been up to when it relates to Red Workflow and the new version of Final Cut 10. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take your lock sequence in Final Cut 7, and then we're going to bring that into Final Cut 10 and have it connect back to all of your R3D media. And then either finish your movie within Final Cut 10 or in another program like DaVinci Resolve. So anyway, we're going to get started by uh, going into our locked picture sequence in Final Cut 7. And the first thing we're going to do is take that sequence and get it prepped properly so that it's going to work with 7x, which is a program I'm going to show you how to download right now. So go to the App Store and type in 72x. It retails for $10. Um, it's worth the money. So anyway, go ahead and download that and install it on your system. And let's go ahead and open up Final Cut 7 and get started. So a couple notes as we get going. If you happen to be wondering what 7 to X does and it wasn't readily apparent from the title, basically it takes your sequence from Final Cut 7 and it translates it to Final Cut 10. And what I'm going to tell you about now is a few ways to make that transition as seamless as possible. So before you export your XML from Final Cut 7 to convert it in 7 to X, you're going to need to do the following things. Uh, first, if necessary, you're going to want to media manage your sequence or project to a single drive. And you're going to want to make sure all of your media is online. Uh, you're also going to want to convert your motion projects to rendered quick times and you're going to want to export freeze frames as stills and then bring them back in. Uh, your variable speed changes are going to be reflected as constant speed changes and you may need to slip a frame or two here and there and that's something you can check once you're in Final Cut 10. Also, the big thing is you're going to want to unlink your merged video clips in the timeline. Um, and the reason for this is so that the audio comes in properly beneath your video in Final Cut 10. Uh, if you've got any questions about how any of this stuff works, the help document in 7 to X is pretty comprehensive and should explain any questions you might have. So with that in mind, go ahead and prep your Final Cut 7 sequence accordingly and then we're going to go ahead and export an XML of the sequence that we're going to convert in 7 to X and bring it into Final Cut 10. Uh, you're going to want to use the default settings for the XML and just export it and final, let Final Cut 7 do its thing and um, before we bring it into Final Cut 10 though there's still a few things that we need to do in Final Cut 7. Anyway, the first thing we're going to want to do is export a reference QuickTime of our sequence so that we can check our work in Final Cut 10. So just go in to the export window, export according to current settings, and as you can see I've already done that for this sequence, but go ahead and do it for yours and export your reference QuickTime and then jump back into your project. Because the next thing we're going to want to do is start to prep our sequence for work in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is make a new bin with um, and title it 002 for Resolve and then you're going to go and take the sequence you just made, alt drag it into that bin and which will duplicate it, maybe relabel it, I'll relabel it green and then you're going to want to rename the sequence and we'll rename this sequence uh, bed for Resolve. So the next thing you're going to do is open that sequence and jump back over to the timeline. And there's a number of things you're going to want to do to get your sequence ready. The first of which is to go through and delete your titles out of that sequence. So I'm going to delete the, the ones there in the end and I think there's one more on top of it that I need to delete. And from there you're going to want to go ahead and delete all of your audio out of the sequence. Uh, that's one of the reasons we export our 
XML to uh, 7 to X was to preserve that data. And finally, what we're going to want to do is push Option T and open up the timeline so that we can see where our speed changes are. And I'll show you what we're going to do with those. Now, what you're looking for here is um, kind of scrunched together tick marks uh, in your sequence. As you'll see as I'm scrolling through, you're going to see a couple coming up in a second. Um, there they are and you'll see how those tick marks are crunched together and that's how you're going to know if you have a speed change on a clip so zoom in there and match frame that clip and then drag it back into your timeline on the video tra track directly above it and the next thing you're going to do is delete the original so that the speed change is gone and you're going to do the same thing with this clip and the reason that you're doing this is because Resolve does not handle speed changes very well especially when it's going to translate back from Final Cut 7 to Final Cut X so what you really want to do is go through your sequence and find all of these and make sure that you retime them back to zero or back to 100% speed so that everything is going to run through smoothly when you make the transition from Resolve to Final Cut 10. And just in case you're wondering whether there's going to be a way to to get back those speed changes in your sequence, the answer to that is yes and you're going to see that in a little while. But what you're going to want to do next is go through your sequence and find all the clips with the little green bar on them and double check to make sure whether those are filters that um, will work with Final Cut 10. If they're not, go ahead and delete them. And um, just in case you were wondering what all of those colored lines mean, uh, the filters, as I said, are reflected by green lines on a clip, but those blue lines that you see in the sequence those reflect clips that have position adjustments. Um, anything in the motion tab that's been adjusted or keyframed or any of that stuff is going to show up as a blue line in your sequence. So anyway, now that we've uh, gone through the sequence, the next step is going to be to export a XML that we're going to open up and resolve. And the reason that we're going to do that is so that we can reconnect back to our original R3Ds and then we're going to take that XML and we're going to send it in to Final Cut 10. So go ahead and export the XML from your to resolve sequence and save it and then let's go ahead and open up resolve and connect back to our R3Ds. Oh, and would you look at that we are now in DaVinci Resolve 9 so go ahead and log in under your username and uh, just in case you're new to Resolve, let's go over to the Blackmagic website and scroll down to the bottom of the page and you'll see where to download your free copy of Resolve Lite or um, the regular license costs a thousand. And let's return back to Resolve now and start a new project that's going to include the XML we just exported from Final Cut 7. So, Click the plus button and I'm going to name mine Bedsty underscore to Final Cut X. And when you're done typing, click create and a new project is going to be created. Double click on that project and you're going to be in the media tab of DaVinci Resolve. So um, the next thing you're going to do is start adding your clips into the media pool which is what I'm hovered on on the bottom of the screen and that's going to tell Resolve what clips you wanted to have access to when you import sequences or to use in your project. So I'm going to go dig through and I'm going to find all of my red media which is labeled over three days. I'm going to drop day one in there. You'll see those clips appear into the media pool. Let's jump over to day two and grab all of those reels. Drop those in and you'll see they magically appear. And let's go over to day three now. Add that in and put that into the media pool as well. And then there's a few other things that um, I need to drop in as well. I have a title sequence that I want to use so I'm gonna add that one in and that's in a different place 
and there's also some 5D footage that was shot for this as well which I need to add into the project so Resolve can find it. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to grab those ProRes transfers uh, of that footage and drop those into the media pool so that all of the video footage that's being used in the film is going to be part of the XML that we're about to bring in. And if you look through the media pool, you'll see all of these clips getting reflected. Um, there's a ton of media there. And uh, basically, this is what Resolve is going to use to access the media when you right click the top left there and go under import and import the XML we made to Resolve from Final Cut 7. So let's do that. We're going to click open and there's a dialog box that's going to appear. Leave everything alone except for automatically export source clips into media pool. We don't want it to reference the media that um, Final Cut 7 was referencing. We want it to reference the media pool that we just dragged in. So when you click OK, your XML is going to open, save your project, and now go through your sequence and all of your media is going to be referencing your original R3Ds and any other files that you added into your media pool that reconnect into the XML that you generated from Final Cut 7. So go through, take a look, make sure everything's there, you don't have any black frames, you don't see any slates, anything confusing or misleading. And once you're satisfied with that, we're going to go ahead and export an XML that we're going to bring into Final Cut 10. So click on the XML and then go to export AF XML and make a new folder that's gonna say I'm gonna call mine FCPX but this is for XMLs that are gonna come into Final Cut 10. So create that and then rename your XML to I'm gonna name mine bed underscore sty for or from resolve click OK and you have made your XML and we're ready to dive into Final Cut 10 anyway that'll do it for part one of the Final Cut 7 to Final Cut 10 red workflow series in the next lesson I'll show you how to get up and running with your Final Cut 7 project in Final Cut 10 and the link for that video is in the description below as well as all the other red workflow tutorials I've done so far also all the steps from this tutorial have been posted in the description below. And if you have any questions or things you notice that you want to add to this workflow, go ahead and post them in the comments section. At the end of the day, the goal is to make this stuff as seamless and easy as possible for you, and I'd love to get your feedback on how to make things better. And if you watch this and it all went totally over your head, or you just don't feel like doing it, well, this is what I do for a living, so feel free to hire me either to consult on your project or even to finish your film for you if that's what you need. So, if you want to get in touch, just drop me an email over at sam at wemakemovies.org. And if you're wondering what this whole We Make Movies thing is, check us out over at wemakemovies.org. Or if you live in L.A. or Toronto, sign up for our newsletter and then come to one of our events. I'll see you guys next time. And cut!